so we've kind of started changing up our loadouts more and more, especially when we go into multiplayer, and today I thought we'd kind of continue that and do a hunt with all lever action weapons. So we have the 4570, the 3030, and the 10 gauge shotgun. And on a live stream not that long ago, we kind of discussed this, and I realized using the 10 gauge birdshot, it is actually possible to cover all animal classes from 1 to 9 with just these three weapons. So I think it'll be fun to see what kind of challenges these weapons present. I think the big thing is going to be range, because none of them are really good at long range. And we'll kind of see what we can find out here on Verhunga Savannah multiplayer. So, this is terrible timing to try to record a multiplayer video, because we're doing this on a Tuesday evening. And around 7 p.m. Eastern, Steam does their server maintenance, so we got kicked out of the server that we were in, and there's just no servers up. So right now we're in single player. We're going to try to get a couple of lines just to kill some time. Then hopefully we'll get back into multiplayer, but it'll be interesting to see what the 4570 does on a lion. That's a hard shot. Let's see if this guy's going to run and stop. That would be nice, because with the render glitch being in effect still, there's a good chance that if we try to hit that guy, he would just run out of render and disappear anyway. But good to know we can drop the lions, and at least between the two, we got the female, which is what we want for our respawns, because eventually we want to get a albino female or something for the multi-mounts, but double lung and heart. Good to know what that's capable of, and that we can do that to kind of ensure we're not going to have to deal with that glitch in multiplayer if we run into a trophy lion. This has been such a problematic spot. The lions always get spooked before we can see them. And unfortunately she stepped forward, but it was only like 120 meters. Unfortunately it did bring her down, but that is pretty good to know, because she went quite far. And I actually mentioned at the beginning that I thought range might be the biggest issue, but especially kind of dealing with the render issue anyway, where we need to kind of get close to avoid it, it might not be that big a deal, because it's kind of what we're doing regardless of weapon. But servers are back up now, so we're officially in multiplayer, and we should be good to actually stay here this time. Guess it's only fitting. We got to see the 4570 with lions. As long as we can get around this guy for a second to actually get a shot off. We can see what it'll do on Cape Buffalo. That's not even the right one, and we definitely did not make a very good shot. We'll try to make sure we get lungs. I don't think that did, though. So we're going to be dealing with that one for a minute. It wasn't really a good angle for a weaker caliber. Now that one's going to go down just fine, but our level 6 is definitely going to be kind of messed up as far as whatever score we should get. So, now that the level 8's going down, and especially now that we've already messed that one up, we'll just put a few more rounds in him. He is going to go down here hopefully sometime soon. I don't know how we managed to avoid taking damage, but... At the very least, we got the better one with the proper score. Just single lung shots, so definitely capable of bringing them down. The penetration's good there. We might even be able to get a hard shot on one that's actually standing still, but when they're charging us, that's a little more difficult. I'm actually kind of surprised that's even a level 4 chem's buck. It obviously is the troll horns, but I wouldn't have been shocked if that had said level 5. But at this point, it's starting to feel like kind of a 4570 test, because we're just going down through like all the tankiest species on this map. But since that's a good one, We'll see if we can maybe get kind of like that quartering hard shot there. And we definitely did. I'm quite pleased with how well the 4570 is doing so far. I mean, we dropped the lion and the Gemsbuck now, and the Cape Buffalo, we didn't really have a shot lined up to where it could have been an instant drop, but it still did quite well. But I actually am curious as to what this guy's going to score. Yeah, 319, and he's close to like 230 kg. It's somewhere in that area where they start to be level 5s, but... Again, like the lion, double lung and heart. I guess it's really just the fact that it does have the limited range, and usually we run with the Argus scope, which of course the lever action rifles can't use. Because I always kind of expect the 4570 to not be that good, but every time we use it, it tends to actually surprise me. Well, that one actually is a level 5, and I think those are the horns that have a chance of being diamond. Now, he's going nervous, those definitely are the right horns. The question is, for one, if he's alert, is there a lion over there, or is it just because he spooked? Because sometimes they just go right back to alert after they do spook. I can't tell, based on what these others are doing, if they're going to try to come back. I don't think they are. I have a decent amount of confidence in the 4570 at that range. I think we're going to go for this. Especially when he went alert again there. There is a lion over there, and that is into a lung. Now, we have to kind of cross our fingers 
that he doesn't go out of our render. He was starting to go down. I'm trying to look at this. I think we're best going off around the other side. He did just die. That's already 300. That might not have been our best move. I talked about range being a potential issue earlier. I think, though, as long as he kind of went the direction I think he did, we should be okay, because it didn't seem like he ran that far. And it looks like we lucked out, because he's down pretty much where I thought he might go. So, fortunately, choosing this direction was not a bad thing. And, of course, probably like 90 plus percent of level 5 male Gemsbuck troll anyway, but he had a chance at that SM up to 356. And, like I said, luckily he went down in our render and will actually get to the claim move and find out. So the question then becomes, is he at least 337.5? I believe that is the diamond requirement. Rocky doesn't push us away from him. He is 331, and almost 236 kg. He might have had a really slight chance. They usually got to be like 238 or higher. Good to actually see a good size one. And actually, that was 210 meters. I think we figured like 220, so it was probably about the same, but aiming a little higher wouldn't have been a bad idea. And I think we're lucky that we got the bottom of the lungs where you don't have to penetrate as far through to get both. I'm not sure that he would have stayed in our render if it was a single lung shot, but he was a gold at the end of the day, so wouldn't have been like we're losing a diamond mail, which is something I do want to eventually get. I'm not 100% sure, but I think we're catching this Cape Buffalo actually leaving his drink zone. But I want to try this with the 4570 just because of what we've seen with the other species. If we can alert him and then go for like a frontal heart shot, just see if it's possible, because I know it is with the 7mm. Let's see if he'll actually just go alert. It would be nice if we could actually spot him and see, because we need to be able to see the bottom of his chest, because that really helps with lining up the shots, so maybe if he'll do it in this gap, eventually he should go back to attentive and then be able to be alert and stand still. That's kind of what we need out of this, unless he'll just do it as is. Maybe like that? That may well be a hard shot, actually. There's almost no way I could see him going down that fast unless it was a hard shot. In which case, we've now taken pretty much the three beefiest animals on Verhunga with hard shots with the 4570, which is not really the ultimate goal of this hunt, but pretty cool nonetheless. And by the way, pretty good sized mythical to deal with, but it was actually lung and heart, which makes it even crazier that it even ran, but a 147 score, probably about as big as they can get and still be mythical. It's not too much bigger where they start to be level 9 trolls, but yeah, that's actually quite cool. And again, like I was saying earlier, the 4570 just tends to always surprise me. Like, it's around the same as the 7 mil as far as power and penetration and all that, but there's just something about it where I don't expect that kind of thing. This has a lot of potential, but it's in the worst spot. It's a max rate estimate melanistic kudu track, but we have guns that are just not ones that I'm at all willing to take, like running shots or anything like that. And just in general, when we're tracking animals down and doing what we often do, which is kind of spook them into the distance and then try to shoot them when they stop, range is kind of key there, and we just don't have a lot of that, but this could be something pretty special. We'll have to see if we can figure out where he got to. I think he's sticking with these ones, even though I don't see any more of his tracks. But there's a decent chance we could be on this for quite some time. And it depends on what the uh, freshness of the tracks is, but I wouldn't be shocked if this takes a while to actually get something lined up for him. I'm pretty sure that's our guy there. He is just a four, but everything's spooked, and they rest in this area, but the zone's about to end. And honestly... Yeah, that's definitely melanistic. With a shot opportunity there, we're taking it because this seems to be an area where it's kind of like the Warthog and Cape Buffalo zones around this map. Like there's a couple of feed zones down here and the Cape Buffalo one is quite well known over here by the lookout where just tons of Cape Buffalo feed. It seems like there are just a ton of kudu that rest right here and it's kind of like just north of this outpost in the Fever Tree Forest. And once we had that shot opportunity, I was not about to let that go by without taking it. Because I really wasn't sure we'd see him again. The zone ends super soon. And honestly, I'm just glad we had the opportunity at like a good clean shot. Brought him down immediately. But that is a nice set of horns on a good sized melanistic kudu. 
course, Rocky's trying to walk around and photobomb us. But let's go ahead and claim that. I don't think we got the best of pictures, but we can do that in the Trophy Lodge. That is a 27.8. Melanus the Kudu is barely into the max weight range. But like I said, a nice set of horns for a rare one. And I was just thinking at the beginning of this, we've had a lot of Verhunga Diamonds on the new scoring system, but not a lot of Verhunga Rares. So that's definitely one to hang up somewhere in the Trophy Lodge. So I kind of figured after the Kudu that we'd wrap up, but I started to realize that we'd actually only use the 4570 today, and I feel at least a little bit obligated since we are doing a loadout-specific hunt to get at least one thing with the other two weapons. I'm not actually 100% sure that we got that, but I think I saw the rabbit go down. It was just in that weird state that rabbits seem to have, where it says they're fleeing, but then they just sort of hang around. And... To be honest, it's not a special one, so I don't really mind taking that and take advantage of the fact that we don't have to track it around to actually get it. I think the way that looks, though, it actually stopped doing that and was going to flee. So I guess we timed that right, and it was a gold, so not too bad there. And the hope is down at this lake we can maybe get a springbuck with the 30-30 now. I definitely didn't expect just finding a male springbuck to be this difficult, but... We finally have a couple here. That level 4 would be a guaranteed gold at least. So as long as Rocky stops pushing us around, if he'll turn back towards us just a little more, I think even that'll work. Should be enough to bring him down fairly quickly. And now we've officially actually used all three weapons in our loadout. It's one of those weird things where, even though we covered a lot of area and didn't focus on one particular species, I'm not sure what's wrong with that guy, but we just sort of consistently were finding ones that were class 4 or higher, but nice to actually get to use the others a little bit, and throughout, we saw the 4570 just being fantastic for pretty much everything we used it for, and it's probably something I need to stop overlooking to the degree that I do, because clearly, it is more than capable on even the biggest game, but we're going to head back to the Trophy Lodge and find somewhere for our Kudu. I'd love to do, like, an albino and a melanistic, but because we actually do have two gold melanistic kudu, I thought we'd bring them both out front here. And we kind of have the same thing going on with the two diamond cape buffalo up there from Burhunga, but I quite like that they are different horn shapes. So this was a 26.2 that we shot back in August of 2020. And then we have our new one, 27.8 from today. And you can just see how much bigger he is. He's got like the extra curl and more mass. I just think that's really cool. It's better than two diamond cinnamon teal up there. And it definitely adds something a little bit special to this lodge. And... If we could ever get an albino female, because that's the only rare female kudu uh, for a variation there is, that could make for a really cool multi-mount, but for now I like what we have going on up there on the wall, and on that note, I think that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.